My spider sense is tingling. So I saw Avengers Infinity War the other day, pretty much as soon as it was available that night. And as expected, it was awesome. In fact, it was even better than I expected it to be. As usual, I'm now inspired by having watched that and I want to make a video on it. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how you can develop reactions just like Spider-Man. In other words, can you develop a real spider sense? So first off, let's start with the bad news. There is no such thing as a spider sense. However, what we do have is the ability to detect danger that we're unconscious of, that we're not aware of. So in a recent study, scientists, researchers showed participants faces that they'd been taught to fear in one eye whilst distracting them in the other eye so that they wouldn't be consciously aware of those faces. And what they found was that although the participants weren't aware of those scary faces, they still showed a physiological response. Um, sweat on their fingertips and elevated heart rate, all that good stuff. So even though they didn't know those faces were there, they knew they were in danger. And this is something that we all do to an extent. Of course, there are methodological problems with that study. For instance, how can you be completely sure that they didn't just see the face? But on the other hand, it does lend support for something that we already know to be true. And this is that you can register things in your periphery and respond to them even before you're consciously aware of them. So we take in a huge amount of data from all our senses, far more information than we can attend to at any given point. And thus our brain has to filter that information and tell us what to focus on. Normally this means focusing on what's directly in front of us, what we're doing, but we're still aware of the stuff in the periphery. We're still aware of those background noises, of the temperature changes, etc. And if something dangerous should be detected here, then suddenly our attention will switch, will switch focus to that thing so that we can escape. This is why our ears prick up when we hear someone say our name in a crowded room. This is called the cocktail effect. And it's also why we get that sensation that we're being watched and then we look up and we are. It's not because we have some kind of sixth sense, although that'd be cool. It's because we have gaze perception and that allows us to quickly work out where someone's looking. So if from the corner of your eye and you're not even aware of it, you can detect where someone's looking and they're looking at you, then your brain will say, hey, I'm in trouble or this person wants to speak to me and your attention will switch to that person. We actually have specific brain networks specifically for gaze perception. This is an important aspect of our psychology. So we have the ability to react to stuff before we're even aware of it and that's the closest we're going to get to a spider sense. What we need to do is make sure that we can detect that stuff better and respond to it, react to it quicker. And there's a few ways we can do this. The first is to make sure that we focus on enhancing our senses. And I've talked about this several times in the past. I've done a video and a post on daredevil training, so check that out. But I'm going to focus for the moment on peripheral vision because peripheral vision is something I've also touched on a bit and it's just generally super cool and important. So our eyes are filled with photoreceptors which detect light and then relay that information to the brain where it's assembled and turned into something that we can actually understand. We have far more, a far denser cluster of photoreceptors in the center of the eye, the focal point, the fovea, than we do around the periphery. However, those peripheral photoreceptors are actually much quicker at sending signals to the brain. 25% quicker in fact. So if you see something in the periphery of your vision, you can actually respond to that, react to that far quicker than you can if you're looking directly at it, which is strange, but it does explain why when you open a cupboard and all the stuff falls out, you're able to really quickly catch it even though you normally don't have those sort of lightning reflexes. Again, this is getting into Spider-Man type territory. The good news is that thanks to something called visual plasticity, which is very similar to brain plasticity, which I just did a whole video on, it is possible to create new photoreceptors or restore or improve existing ones through training. So by training your peripheral vision, you could detect information from the corners of your eyes quicker and respond to that information quicker as well. Once again, this is said, specific adaptations to impose demands, meaning that the best way to improve our peripheral vision is just to practice using it. And there are programs out there, computer programs, that will allow you to do this. They normally involve focusing on a central point, a pixel, while something happens on the edge of the screen and you have to say as soon as you see that thing. Another exercise you can use is something called the straw and chopsticks. So you hold a straw in the center of your vision and you draw a line down the middle or you get someone else to hold it or you can prop it up on a table. Then you're gonna use chopsticks in either hand and whilst staring right at the center of the straw, you're gonna try and feed the chopsticks into the edges of the straw. And as you get better at that, you can make the straw longer by attaching multiple together. Another cool way to train your uh, peripheral vision and your reflexes is juggling, which 
also encourages a lot of hand-eye coordination and ambidexterity, likewise bouncing a ball against a wall and especially if you keep your vision on a fixed point in the centre and then try and react to that ball, again using both hands even better, um, that way you're using your peripheral vision and you're trying to quickly react to things that are happening before you can potentially even think them through. I've talked in the past about something called wide angle vision or owl eyes or splatter vision. To activate this, you simply engage your peripheral vision and a trick for doing it when you're starting out is to put your arm up by your side like that, wiggle your fingers and then focus on the fingers wiggling out the corners of your eyes while still looking forwards. And now you've activated that kind of widespread of vision. This will allow you to respond to things quicker to take in more information and also actually lowers your heart rate and makes it easier to enter a flow state or a meditative state. It does this because there's a two-way correlation between um, focusing and physiological arousal. In other words, when our heart rate's up, we tend to focus more on what we think is dangerous and when we're calm, our eyes spread out. So this is a good way to calm yourself down also. And in fact, there's a form of Hawaiian meditation called Hakalau, or Hakalau, I don't know how you pronounce it. This is all about engaging your peripheral vision. They say to do it simply by sitting down somewhere quiet, focusing on a point on the wall and then letting your vision spread out to the sides. And when you try it, you'll find it is much easier to empty your mind and enter a state of calm. This should also mean that you're now more ready to react to sounds or movement or anything else you need to quickly respond to. Similarly, during a fight, good advice is to try resting your gaze on the chest of the opponent. Don't focus on the center of the chest, don't look for telegraphed movement, just allow your eyes to rest on that general area. Then trust in your peripheral vision and your reflexes to react to their movements and to know where they're looking thanks to your gaze perception, etc. So now we have an improved ability to detect danger. The next thing to do is to try and improve our reaction time so we can respond more quickly when it happens so we can backflip over Doc Ock's tentacles as they come hurtling towards us. Have you ever wondered why cats have such great reflexes, where the term cat-like reflexes comes from? It might have to do with greater myelination of the neurons responsible for visual information. In other words, the axons, the tails of their neurons, have better insulation, allowing nerve impulses, action potentials, to travel more quickly from the optic nerve into the brain and to the processing areas. We can also increase myelination throughout our brain to potentially improve our reflexes. And you can do this through your diet by getting more omega-3 fatty acids, by getting more sleep, by getting more exercise, and at the same time, by using a whole host of different supplements and herbal extracts and things. Several rat studies have shown these to be effective and they include Gotto Cola, Uridine, Ashwagandha, Forscolin, and Lion's Mane Mushroom. I also read an interesting article recently about the benefit of pre-planning what you want to do in a potential dangerous situation. In other words, if you drop something, what do you do? Do you kick it? Do you grab it? For instance, if you drop a knife, visualizing yourself not catching it but stepping out the way could help you to react correctly by essentially practicing those neural pathways so you don't have to stop and think about what you're going to do or potentially grab it and catch it and hurt yourself. It's a common reflex for a lot of people if they drop something to kick it or to catch it on their foot so it doesn't damage itself when it falls on the ground. I remember one time when I was younger my mum asked me to carry some coleslaw into the kitchen. She had our guest round, our neighbour, and I picked it up because I'm a dutiful son, took it to the kitchen, dropped it and out of reflex went to catch it on my foot. What I actually ended up doing was drop kicking it and it exploded everywhere and coleslaw went all over my mum and all over our elderly neighbour and all over the table and I was in a lot of trouble. Once I explained what I did they thought it was very funny but yeah that was a bad reflex. So practicing your reflexes is also important. This is why martial arts are so effective because you're repeatedly reinforcing those neural connections causing more myelination, causing more long-term potentiation. Like Bruce Lee says, it's better to practice one kick a thousand times than a thousand kicks once. You can also just train to increase your reaction speeds, though unfortunately this is largely genetic and there's only so much, roughly 10%, that you can affect this by. So a good reaction speed is 0.1 of a second and a slow reaction speed is 0.4. Most of us will be somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. There are plenty of computer games online and other things you can use to test and hone your reflexes and your reaction times. One thing that does increase reaction times, of course, is stimulants using things like caffeine. There's lots of nootropics that will do this, but winding yourself up like that 
isn't necessarily going to improve performance. Something that we do know can increase reaction times, at least in an activity specific manner, is overspeed training. I've talked about overspeed training in the past in the context of running, but actually performing any task more quickly can help you to become better at performing it slowly. So for example, some Formula One drivers will drive in simulations that go much faster than their real cars so that they get better at responding quickly. And then when they return to, you know, real life speeds, it seems relatively slow. It's possibly got something to do with potentiation or excitation of the neurons, I'm not sure how it works, but it's the similar um, phenomenon that we notice when we come off the motorway onto the side roads and suddenly we feel like 30 miles an hour is a crawl. So overspeed training could be useful for training your reaction times in a whole host of different contexts. On a side note, maybe practicing speaking more quickly could increase your verbal fluency. We know likewise that playing computer games can increase your reaction times, and why not try turning up the speed on that? If you spar, try sparring faster. Another cool method of training reaction time in particular could be trail running. When you trail run, you're running through the woods, you're running through fields, any kind of uh, rough terrain, and you're trying not to twist your ankle in a ditch, trying not to trip over twigs or slip on mud. This means you're using all of your senses together, not only your vision, but also your proprioceptive abilities, your balance, in order to stay upright whilst moving quickly. You can also practice your owl eyes, your wide angle vision here, and this is generally gonna to help to improve your reaction times and your agility, your lightness on your feet, which is all very Spider-Man-y. So yeah, those are some ways that you can increase your alertness, your awareness, but also your reaction times in order to respond as though you had a real life spider sense. It's the closest we can get, or is it? There's actually two more methods you could use to get a spider sense, both of which are a bit more out there and a bit more science fiction. The first of these is to use synesthesia. There is actually a real life person with something similar to a spider sense called Berit Bogard. They have synesthesia, synesthesia being a condition that causes your senses to merge, the most common example being seeing colours when you hear music. In the case of Berit Brogard, she would see this kind of scene of scary mountains and hills and they get this general sense of dread as soon as she detected danger, even unconsciously. So the story that she recounts is walking through the woods and coming close to stepping on a snake. She didn't see it, but she caught it in the periphery of her vision and she would have stepped on it had it not been for this sudden visual cue. This is called projective uh, synesthesia, I believe. She had this sudden visual cue and she knew not to step down on the snake and as such, it saved her life. This is the closest thing to a real life spider sense. We know that you can train synesthesia. Studies have shown that it's possible, at least to some degree. Whether or not you can train the specific form of synesthesia, I don't know. But what about, for instance, if you played some of those games where you look out for things in your peripheral vision, or if you played computer games and at the same time tried to visualize some kind of cue to warn yourself on top of what you're seeing. I don't know if this could work, but if you practiced it, maybe it couldn't, especially if you combined it with techniques to increase your brain plasticity. It's just an idea, but it's definitely cool that there's something out there. And the other option comes from someone called Viktor Matavitsi, and this is a guy who's invented a suit that allows you to experience what it might be like to have a spider sense. It works by sending out signals, I think it's sonar or something like that, or light infrared, I'm not sure. They bounce back, and when the suit detects that, it uses a haptic feedback, so a small motor or something like that, and you feel it through the jacket. So this way you can detect things that are close to you, behind you, to your side, in front at the same time. It's a bit like having parking sensors built into your jacket, but as a result, you can dodge things, you can avoid hazards, and it has a lot of potential applications for people with um, you know, visual impairment. At the same time though, it's also been suggested that it could be useful for uh, military personnel, and also people working on construction sites who need to dodge falling debris, avoid stepping off of things, so it could just give you more body awareness. It's a really interesting idea, and what's also interesting is how your brain would react to this essentially additional sense. And who knows, what's even cooler is that one day this technology might be shrunk down and implanted into our skin. And then we'll have transhuman spider sense. And this really could give us the ability to dodge a pumpkin grenade thrown from behind us that we completely don't even need to look at. Because dodging stuff without looking at it is way cooler. So there you go, that's just some thoughts on how you might develop a real life spider sense. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have preternatural awareness and reflexes, but we can increase our senses to the point where we can react to stuff that we're not even yet consciously aware of. And in the future, there's some really interesting possibilities for how we might develop something close. This is one of those slightly more realistic superpowers.
Let me know in the comments down below what you think, if I've missed anything. I am interested as well in Spider-Man's senses being used for predicting kind of general danger and whether or not there's anything to look into there, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Likewise, I'd love to know what you think of Avengers Infinity War. And as always, thanks a ton for watching. Stay tuned for more like this. I'll be going over Captain America soon, like I say, whether or not you can create a real life super soldier serum. Going to be talking about how to think like Tony Stark. And I've got all the usual stuff on the way. I've already half recorded a video on tendon strength, on my workout regime, on uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and working online, another one. So if that all sounds good, then stay tuned. Thanks a ton for watching. And bye for now.